Hi, Armand here to discuss the September 1st, 2016 solar eclipse. But before we get to that, a couple of little orders of business. First of all, your comments and questions. I truly appreciate your comments and questions. Not, not all of them, but you know what I mean. I really appreciate your comments and questions. I cannot respond to them. Google would like me to consolidate all the names that I use, really two, and I want to use Integral Astrology when I am posting videos here on YouTube, and I want to use Armand Diaz when I am liking somebody's music video someplace else. And so every time I go to answer your comment, they get into this whole thing with me. They're a big company. I'm a Leo. This isn't going to be resolved anytime soon. If you'd like to get a comment to me, if you feel it's important, and I will respond to it, then go to the website, integralastrology.net, and send me an email. On the other hand, you should just be going to integralastrology.net anyway. There's lots of good articles. For example, there's a very popular article on Mercury retrograde, and Mercury goes retrograde on August 31st. So you'll want to check that out. Actually, Mercury goes retrograde on August 30th. So you'll want to check that out. The... Last order of business, besides going to the website and the questions and comments thing, is that I'll be speaking at ESAR 2016 in October. And if you're going to ESAR, and why would you not go to ESAR? Or is it ISAR? The International Society for Astrological Research, their conference in mid-October. I will not only be presenting on re timing of relationship astrology, which is a very interesting topic, and I think you're going to love it. It's based in part on my book, Separating Aspects, but it's, uh, it's more about how we know when different stresses and challenges and opportunities are coming up in relationship. And I'll also be giving a pre-conference workshop on predicting social changes. I mean, everything from pet rocks to marriage equality, things that we can talk about in terms of social changes. It's going to be a really interesting, fun type of pre-conference workshop. So if you go into ESAR, come see me. Now, down to this eclipse. The eclipse is a new moon in Virgo. Okay, it's a solar eclipse. Solar eclipses are new moons. New moons are always great times for beginning new things and ending things that are sort of at their at the end of their cycle. So it's a time of endings and beginnings. All right, that may not be the most useful information you've gotten on the internet today. But before you go look at anything else, let's talk about this a little bit. First of all, the new moon is in Virgo. And the new moon in Virgo is always a good time to begin things that have to do with improving your health and well-being. So, for example, diet and exercise programs. You know, if you've put on some summer weight or if you're below the equator, some winter weight, doesn't matter where you are, right? It's always easy to gain weight. If you've been putting on some weight, it's a good time to begin a diet and exercise program. It's a good time to start healthy living. It's a, you know, not always the most appealing thing. If you have a cancer moon, it's not the most appealing thing. But it's a good thing to do at this time. And so if you've been thinking about that, this is a good time to implement. If you haven't been thinking about it, maybe you should think about it a little bit. Okay, uh, the Virgo new moon is also a great time. It's more a calendar year thing than an astrological year, but it's always a good time to sort of say, what have I accomplished so far this year? What still needs to be done if I'm going to have had a good year? What do I need to throw myself into in terms of work and things that need to be done? It's a little bit of a serious kind of question to be asking yourself, but it's a new moon solar eclipse, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be serious about it. Don't be overly serious, but be serious. The big thing, however, is that this eclipse is very much tied into the Saturn-Neptune square. Now, the Saturn-Neptune square is the dominant aspect of 2016. It kicked off in November of 2015. It reached a kind of peak in late May and throughout June of 2016. And it is reaching its denouement, its ending, its payoff point on September 9th. And, of course, this is an aspect that really reverberates for quite some time as the moon and the sun and everybody else kind of, you know, continues the energy of the aspect. But, again, it sort of peaks it's on September 9th. Now, this aspect, uh, Saturn, is our reality. It's solid. It's what you can depend upon. And Neptune is what brings you beyond 
that Saturnian reality. And so our experience over the course of pretty much the last year has been one of uncertainty. What we thought we knew, what our structure was, somehow dissipates. Now Saturn is in the sign of Sagittarius, and Saturn in Sagittarius is very much about our belief systems, our structures, religious, political, and otherwise. And so Neptune squaring Saturn has brought up great questions about our social, political, and to an extent religious structures. Uh, doubt is part and parcel of the Saturn Neptune square. You thought you know what's you thought you knew what was going on and now you're not so certain anymore. That is Saturn and Neptune. That's what it's about. Um I think we see that very much in the uh it, it, if you take the perspective and I hate to be US centric, but uh if you take the perspective of the two political parties in the United States you know, uh, they thought they knew what they were going to be about in this election, and then Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders came in, and there's been a, a, a tremendous realignment. You know, we're not really sure which way is up anymore. The Democrats have had to change their platform a great deal because of Sanders, even though he didn't get the nomination. Republicans are alternatively thrilled or uh, scared about Donald Trump, and the, we have some people even jumping ship in each party because of this. Which way is up? What do we stand for? What do we believe in? The X-Files, moving away from the political arena, the X-Files made a comeback in 2016, and the X-Files is all about questioning what is the reality behind the reality. And uh, they, they, they took a very political and very socially charged uh, approach to it. I thought the ending was kind of, you know, meh. But, you know, you that has to be because you cannot resolve a conspiracy. There always has to be something else going on behind it. You know, there always has to be another thing. And so, you know, ultimately a conspiracy has to be unsatisfying. There has to be something that you don't know. And uh, actually, this election is, is in the U.S. is characterized by a great deal of uncertainty. Uh, there's been conspiracies all over the place. What is Donald Trump's ch ties with uh, China? No, Russia, Russia. Um, and uh, Hillary Clinton's health, and then Donald Trump's health, and then there's the whole tax return thing, and then there's the email thing. Everything seems to be about anything besides issues. Um, well, I guess there are some issues. Anyways, um, and we see this in we see this all over the world too. We see this kind of uncertainty. This sort of what are we going to do? What are we about? The refugee crisis in uh, particularly as it's uh, manifesting in Europe. What are we going to do? What do we believe in? What where is compassion? Where is our Neptunian compassion? Where is our Saturnian practicality? Very disorienting. And in your own life, too, there's that question, you know, what are you about? What are you trying to do? What are you, What is the point for you? you know, what are they going to, not to be dour, but what are they going to chisel on the tombstone? What are you about? And I think over the last year, many of us have said, not quite sure. And that has been an effect of the Saturn-Neptune square. It peaked in May and June, and I think that there was a time there in early June when it just seemed sometimes that time had stopped. As I said, you know, it's like the numbers have fallen off the clock face and the letters have melted off the compass. Time and space just seemed to be kind of nebulous. And um, it's, it's disorienting when you don't know where you're going, which way is up, when you're lost at sea and you don't know the way to shore. And you can sort of be in the doldrums. You can just sort of be suspended. But now, you can't be suspended anymore. Because we have the powerful energy of the eclipse. Because we have Mars, the planet of action, out of bounds. Which means he's gone beyond the sun's path in the sky. It's out of bounds. And Mars out of bounds means action and precipitous action. And uh, we're also going to have a little dollop of confusion because Mercury goes retrograde two days before this eclipse, and Mercury will be retrograde when Saturn squares Neptune. And so you cannot sit still. You cannot be the deer in the headlights. There's too much force impelling you to action. And so what do you do? 
Well, if you're out at sea and you don't know the way to shore, you look around and say, that might be a cloud or that might be the shoreline. But, you know, we got to put the oars in the water and row towards something. And that is what is going to happen as the month of September unfolds. Something looks like it might be a reasonable way to go. And you move towards it. It might be a new relationship, it might be a new job, it might be new home, it might be reinvesting yourself in a relationship, a job, or your home. It may, Who knows? It could be anything. There's a lot of us out there. We're all going to have different stuff. But you're going to feel the need to move towards something or to invest in something. Uh, just as Neptune dissipates Saturnian structure, Saturn takes Neptunian illusion and says, that could be reality. It takes an idea, it takes a concept, it takes a feeling, an intuition, and concretizes it, makes it into something solid. And that becomes our new reality for a time. And here is the one little bit of astrological wisdom, 11 minutes and 18 seconds in. Here's a little bit of astrological wisdom for you recognize that whatever you choose, whichever way you go, whatever new reality constructs itself out of the chaos and confusion that you've probably been feeling, it's expedient. It may be very good. It's part of your trip, and you should take it. But remember that it is, in fact, a decision. It is, in fact, a hope. It's not necessarily a permanent reality. You know, the numbers have come back onto the clock face, and the letters are back on the compass. It doesn't mean that you have to head off in northwest direction at 315 or something like that. You're going to take some aspect of reality and follow it. You're going to be invested in it. But remember... You know, there was a time when it was an illusion. There was a time when you felt uncertainty. And really and truly, the most productive thing you can do is to remain a little bit flexible, even as you act and believe as though you have certainty. Okay, I hope you'll visit integralastrology.web. I hope you'll see me at ESAR, and I hope you have a reasonable time through the eclipse of September 1st, 2016.